really write it all down. Hello again, everyone. This is the Black Knight, CEO in pajamas of the Basin System Services Corporation. And today we're having a teleconference, a video teleconference, an open video teleconference that is going to be viewed not only by the board members of BASE, but also by all these wonderful special guests on the internet. That's right, because we're talking today a little bit about future BASE policy, uh, the path uh, of videos on this channel, and things going forward in general, and the most especially, the impact of the Gun Running DLC. Now, I'm sure all of you are familiar by this point with the Gun Running DLC, because if you haven't, been in the game recently, you've certainly seen the millions upon millions of videos which have been loaded onto YouTube detailing every single aspect of the gun running DLC. So, I'm not going to go over too much with what, what the DLC is. I'm going to talk about how it's going to impact base and our profitability going forward. So, if we could switch to the computer viewpoint. Very good, very good. Okay, let's take a look at the Maze Bank foreclosure listings here. Now, I do plan on purchasing a bunker just because how can we not have a bunker? It just seems like the thing to do. I'm not sure for many reasons, which we'll get into, how profitable it will be. But I think it's definitely a resource that will benefit the corporation. Now, the one I'm planning on getting is this one here. It is the closest to the city and... It has extremely, I've, I've scoped it out, it does have extremely easy access to the main road, which leads to our Del Perro Enterprise buildings here, with the, the Maze Bank building on this end here, and, uh, and the, the apartment that I have set up right next door to it. It's reasonably priced. It's not the cheapest, it's not the most expensive, but it's closer to being the cheapest. And I think, despite the fact that it will probably be a very heavily trafficked location, uh, I think that this will be an, uh, an excellent choice for our bunker. Now, the way you make money with this bunker is exactly the way you make money with the motorcycle club and as we do with the import-export kind of functions. They're the same things, only with guns. So, we'll all be familiar with the operation of it. It may be more profitable, it may be less. It's going to be, it's very hard to read at first because that's going to depend on success rates. And there are several things which may be affecting our success rate. The first thing that will affect our success rate is, is Rockstar has patched every trick that there was to get into a so-called private public session. A public session that will allow you to do these missions without anyone bothering you. You are now going to be surrounded by players of every stripe and that is going to affect the success rate of the missions. I think it's safe to say that probably soloing these missions is almost completely out of the question. We're going to need to have a detail assigned to every single one of these missions uh, of at least two people, preferably four people. And if we, we do this out of the MC, if we go, if we work these as logged in as our Ukuk MC subsidiary, we can have up to five people and that would be better. And let me explain to you why it most certainly is better now. I mean, before it was tough doing these kind of missions because of all the things that you had, you know, against you, griefers and hydras and hackers and everything else. Let's take a look at the other aspects of this for right now. Let's back out here. The first thing, of course, is we're going to have to deal with mobile operation centers, which... People are going to be driving these around, blasting the crap out of everything. That's just, they have up to three turrets on them, and they're extremely hard to kill. And you see this, well, this is only 1.225 million. To really get it upgraded, it's significantly more than that. And you can't, you can't buy one without buying a bunker first. Uh, I, our, my intent is for us to buy the bunker, not necessarily get the mobile operations there, because its primary function is to serve for weapons upgrades and vehicle upgrades, special vehicle upgrades, which you can see before. Here are the special vehicles which are available to be upgraded in the mobile operations center. Uh, you have an APC, which is extremely, extremely nice. It's got, it can travel in water at a high rate of speed. Uh, if you have two people in it, you can, you can fire on the fly. One person has to stop, switch over seats, and then take the gun. Uh, the Dune FAV, which I don't know if that's forward advanced vehicle or something like that, you know. Um, there's other, there's other more classic, you know, it's fire assault vehicle. There's some, there's some different things that could be, but it's the FAV, 
Uh, the FAV is another possibility. If you can imagine trying to drive a very slow truck down the highway and have two or three of these show up behind you with machine guns, you can imagine how well that's going to go. Uh, we have the half track we're going to be facing. People are going to be in APCs, doing FAVs, half tracks. The Oppressor is probably the best named bike in the game. Because if you can imagine a bike that has a rocket engine on it that can, for all intents and purposes, fly or at least glide very long distances because it has wings, and it can have mounted on it a homing missile. All this thing has to do is pop up over the hill and then lock onto you, and then your day is done. This is going to be, if you're, if you're in a police-minded, uh, you know, if you're role-playing as a police officer, this is a bike to get. This is Street Hawk. This is the Street Hawk from the 80s. That's, it's, it even looks, you know, you put, look at that in profile. It's definitely Street Hawk. Different headlights, but I mean, other than that, hey, that's how they get around it not being straight up. Uh, the weaponized Tampa is extremely effective. It's not heavily armored at all. I mean, even if you put all the decorative armor on it, it's very easy to kill. But that gun will wipe you out in, in no time, especially if it's upgraded. Uh, same thing with the anti-aircraft uh, situation. Like you drag behind a truck, someone just pulls up next to you, blows you to smithereens. The ballistic equipment, I mean, this is this is basically the juggernaut suit i mean it's you know someone could just be walking down the street wasting you with this so there's a lot if you're a griefer and then don't forget we still have all of the other stuff you know i mean the hydras are still going to be out there now we can look out and say maybe all of these guys will be hunting hydras you know maybe there'll be a certain amount of people trying to get payback for all of the uh the things you know for all the things that they've been doing to them for all these years. So, Hydra guy, get get, get the anti-aircraft uh, guns out. So, you could try and do these missions sneaking through the battlefield. But I have a feeling that if we're going to do any kind of gun running missions, they're going to have to be done with the expectation of being full-on PvP. Uh, shooting anybody who even gets close to you before they can do anything. Assuming they're bad guys to begin with. Which could pose some problems for us as we are base... And we're really not a shoot-first sort of organization. We're not griefers. We don't go out and say we treat this as a death match. Everybody's fair game. That's not what we normally do. Uh, here, let me switch to the, the, the GoPro viewpoint here for a minute. Here, this will give you a, a good sense of our, our point of operations here. Most of the best drop-off points for the highest profitability for the gun running and for everything else are down in the city over here. That's going to be where a lot of people are going to be looking for us. And if we really want to, if we really want to do these missions, we're going to have to shoot first and assume that anybody who's coming at us is hostile. Because 99 times out of 100, they're going to be hostile. And it must be said, there might be an easier way to profit off of this DLC than actually doing the gun running missions. If we can get, you know, get an oppressor bike, get a few oppressor bikes, or get a couple APCs and just hunt the people trying to do them, the game does encourage you. It does give you money and RP for hunting people down. But I don't, I don't know that we want to start doing the the police role play. I don't know that we we want to necessarily just start griefing people because. You know, if, we, if we look at it from a real-world morality kind of point of view, all of these things are illegal. So the right thing to do would be to get some kind of... Some sort... What is it? Are you ready for Doomsday? Invest in one... Only, the only nuke-proof underground bunker. You see, they're really pushing it. The right thing to do would be to get an oppressor and make sure nobody can perform any of these missions because they're all... It's just the truth about, truth about import-export, the biker missions. You're the good guy theoretically speaking, if you're going out and interdicting people. But in real life, what you're really doing is just frustrating the heck out of real people. So it's actually the morality sort of flips there, and you're really just being a jerk. I don't, I don't know exactly which way we want to take this, and that might be a good open discussion for um, for the, you know, the description here. We might want to talk about this maybe at a, at a future closed board meeting amongst the members of BASE. Uh, I could see perhaps trying this out for at least one or two videos, seeing what, you know, being the oppressor is like for a video just to see how things are going for, for our audience here. Um, and then we, that, can, that can develop more of a topic of discussion. But I'm really not hot to do it. I'm really not, I'm not interested in being that guy for the most part. You know, I, I'll say this. I won't put any restrictions 
on fellow base members if they want to do interdiction missions. I think we should, the way things are going, we're going to be doing a lot more PvP. If you're in a public session, you're going to be doing PvP. It's just the, the way it is. There's going to be no way you can say, well, I'm going to mind my own business here and, and make money. No, nope, you're going to have to gun people down because there's just no way um, that you can get around that. And if we look at it, if everyone's going to accept that, then, you know, it's really okay. I mean, when you play T-Fortress 2, everyone expects to get shot. Uh, if everyone expects to get shot here, then there won't be any hurt feelings and we'll just move on to the next thing. So, let's move on to the next thing. And that is our other businesses. Are we still going to be doing import-export? Are we still going to be doing MC workload? Uh, I, I think it's going to depend on what we feel like doing. I mean, I'm not going to mandate, all right, everybody do this from now on. What we're going to have to do is see what works, what people are willing to let go. Uh, I mean, it's really your, there's nothing to be gained from blasting a vehicle during a, uh, an import-export special vehicles mission. You don't get any money out of that. So people might be more inclined to zip up on you with the, with the bike, maybe try and snipe you with a, a machine gun. That's easier to deal with. Not easy, but it's easier to deal with. But if we, uh, I think as far as the, the regular import-export missions, I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a dead duck right there. I don't see, it, there's, all they are are very slow, vulnerable vehicles. Bleh! All they are are very slow, vulnerable vehicles, and we're going to be to sitting ducks out there if, for any kind of APC or anything else that could be going on. I, I think that's probably not going to happen. The motorcycle missions might be doable. We don't have any businesses. I don't, I don't have any biker businesses personally invested. And I believe those missions you can do in, say, a, a closed crew session. So the, the biker businesses might be a good option. But we're going to have to wait and see how it all works out. We're going to have to wait and see how it gels. To be perfectly honest, what I would like to do, and I think this might be the most profitable thing for us to do, is to get our hands on a dubs to two and use that as a seed car so that we can basically Grand Theft Auto uh, dubs to twos and sell them for over 20000 a piece. I've got a, I've got a garage set up down um, down by the, on the lower end of the map near one of the Los Santos customs where they're most commonly spawned. And again, you get a, a garage full of those. That's 200000 plus. So the trick of the matter is we're going to need to get that first car. You need to be able to have somebody set up as an MC. And, you know, as the head of an MC, Presidente there, and then get someone made road captain. And then when the road captain calls in a dubs to two, which if they call it a dubs to, it's a dubs to two. It's got the, it's got the offset wheel on the back. Then drive that around in the daytime and you'll see some of them at some point. Grab one and then that person can independently grab these cars. And I think that's something we want everybody to have. We want everybody to get a dubs to two. And this is a good way to supplement our income. And I think that's really... The thing that's got me most excited right now, because I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know that we're going to get a whole lot of money out of the public sessions. We might have a lot of fun, but money, eh, I think it's going to be a losing proposition. And on that note, folks, this is the Black Knight. That's going to do it for this uh, teleconference here. I, if anybody has any questions that they'd like to submit, you can please leave them in the description below. And that, on that note, this is the Black Knight. Everybody have a great night. Where the heck is Sturgis? You got to be kidding me. Are you serious? This number. We met a while ago, I think. Or we should have done. There's a new property on May's Bank foreclosures I'm pretty sure you're going to find interesting. 87% sure, according to our current algorithms. It's an underground bunker, manufacturing facility, and money-making opportunity. Take a look on the site.
Hey, uh... Got this number. We met a while ago, I think. Or we should have done. There's a new property on May's Bank foreclosures I'm pretty sure you're gonna find interesting. 87% sure, according to our current algorithms. It's an underground bunker, manufacturing facility, and money-making opportunity. Take a look on the site.